millions of sky watchers across the country could get a rare look at a ring of fire eclipse tomorrow. It's called an annular eclipse, and it will briefly darken the skies over parts of the western United States and Central and South America. It happens when the moon lines up between the Earth and the sun, and the moon will cover everything except the sun's outer rim. You can see that on your screen. The bright border will appear for about five minutes. And Barbara Ryden is an astronomy professor at the Ohio State University. Uh, you know, I saw an astronomer talking about how this is like the Super Bowl, you know, for astronomers. How would you describe this kind of event that's happening right now? I wouldn't necessarily call it the Super Bowl, okay. more like the Puppy Bowl, because <laughs> eclipses, they're just so beautiful, like little puppies up there in the sky. Oh, my God. I'm not sure that's the right analogy, but I think it'll work. Hey, listen, you got your take. How is a ring of fire eclipse different? I mean, as you mentioned, it's not a full eclipse. Um, you know, what are the difference in stages? Can you paint a picture of how this is going to all work? Um, well... The moon goes around the Earth, but not on a boring circular orbit, always the same distance from the Earth. Instead, it's on an eccentric elliptical orbit. So when it's closest to the Earth, at perigee, as the technical term goes, it appears bigger in angular size in the sky, about 5% bigger than average. If it's a full moon, then that's what we call a supermoon. However, you know, sometimes the moon is at its farthest distance from the Earth, um, apogee, that's called. And then it's just a little too small in angular size to cover the entire disk of the sun. So if you're one of those lucky people for whom the moon and the sun exactly line up, then you get to see this wonderful ring of fire effect. It's called an annular eclipse just because annulus is the fancy word for ring. Okay, I love that. Thank you for breaking down uh, because it is quite a fancy word. It almost tripped me up earlier today. I was like, wait, do I, do I mean to say annual? What am I saying? Um, how often do ring of fire eclipses occur? Unfortunately, not annually mm. because you have to have, first of all, an eclipse. That's kind of the necessary preconception. Uh, so it's, it's necessary, but also it has to occur when the moon is at its furthest distance from the Earth. So... I've forgotten the exact date, but the next annular ring of fire eclipse visible from the United States, I do not think will be for another few decades. Wow, okay. So if you're on that path where you will see the annular eclipse, the ring of fire, I recommend that you take advantage of the opportunity. All right, so if folks are like, I wanna take advantage, sign me up, I'm in the path. How can people view tomorrow's eclipse uh, or annular eclipse? Let me be specific with my words here, safely. And how can people photograph them? We've been seeing these beautiful photos. Well, first of all, you don't need photographic equipment to see an eclipse. However, as your mom and dad probably told you, you should never look directly at the sun, even when it's partially covered up. So if you have a pair of eclipse glasses oh. from a previous eclipse, just make sure that there are no rips or tears in the eclipse glasses. They're safe to reuse. Um, also, you can use a pinhole camera, which sounds fancy, but actually it's just a piece of cardboard with mm. a hole punched in it. Or another of my high-tech... <laughs> Uh, implements here. If you have a, a spaghetti strainer or a colander with little holes on the bottom, you can just cast the shade of this colander onto a flat surface like the sidewalk. And instead of having little bright circles of lights where each of the holes of the colander is, you'll see a little ring of fire. Ah, Barbara, you came ready. You said, I have the glasses, I've got the colander just in case. I haven't heard about that before with the colander. So thank you for those recommendations. Uh, before I let you go, what is the historical and cultural importance of these kind of events? If you could just paint that picture for us. Well, eclipses have always been culturally important, as you might think for an early culture that hasn't really developed astronomy. An unexpected eclipse is really a very, very unsettling event. And so when ancient Babylonian astronomers and ancient Greek astronomers first figured out, oh, there are patterns and you can make a, an, an advanced guess or a projection of when the next eclipse will occur, 
that was a very important step because among other things it showed, oh, no, things don't happen randomly. There are underlying laws for the universe. One thing I like to tell my cosmology students is that the word cosmos, another word for the entire universe, is actually just the ancient Greek word meaning order or harmony. Mm. So when the world seems like things are chaotic and then bad things happen for no reason, the Greeks held on to this idea that somewhere underneath there is an underlying harmony that can be expressed by mathematical or geometrical laws. So I like wow. to think of that. I, Barbara, thank you for sharing that with us, especially as, you know, the world's events have been unfolding throughout this week. I, I will take that uh, lesson that you share as well. Barbara Ryden of The Ohio State University, thank you so much for being with us. Appreciate it.